Good morning, folks. We've got some space weather, earth weather, and news from your hand all the way out into deep space. It's a new day, and let's get started. We're kicking off over at spaceweathernews.com, and finding the last 24 hours on our star were quite calm. There have been no solar flares in days, and that is set to continue as the only sunspot group departs for the far side along with his magnetic fields. Also note the collapse and thinning and loss of dark black area in the northern extension of the coronal hole. We're going to come back to that in just a moment. Solar wind is intense as speed peaks out over 700 kilometers per second, and the intensified stream caused a low level 1 geomagnetic storm for a few hours yesterday. We also saw significant plasma penetration into the atmosphere. While that's not good news, this certainly is. It's a screenshot of my personal phone notifications and alerts, the Disaster Prediction app, obviously that's ours, but the other one there is from the leading space weather alert system on Earth, and our storm condition alert went out 102 minutes before that one, 105 minutes before the official government charts updated. Given that our earthquake alerts come in at the same time as quake feed, folks, this could be the fastest quake and solar alert system currently in existence. You'll be able to get it for a whopping $3 here at the end of the year. Well, I told you we'd come back to this. Focus on the pushing southward of the northern boundary of that coronal hole, dark disappearing in the northern reach. The last 48 hours saw more plasma slowly lifting off the northern hemisphere, and NASA is tracking it as a CME that should deliver an impact to Earth tomorrow. Hmm. Can't really ignore that one, can we? Well, here's SOHO, and you do see a burst heading up and away. Not sure if it's coming at us in the southern portions of it. Well, here it is from stereo as well, behind the sun, confirming that there is ejecta leaving our star going north. But folks, if you think that's a bit thin and doesn't appear too scary, NOAA scientists agree with you as they're not tracking the plasma NASA is, and I have to agree with NOAA. This is not a big story. The coronal hole is finally turning out of sight. Probably nothing significant here, but I'd be remiss not to mention that one last little opening swinging in behind it on the solar equator. Folks, we're looking at X-ray light, radio emissions, visible light, and infrared heat signatures. Chandra, one of the best multispectral scopes in the system, is showing what they believe to be the same galaxy, shown three times as it is almost directly behind another one, and whether it's gravitational lensing or something more electric, it's fascinating to see the same galaxy pop up three times in one image. And speaking of the clash of mainstream physics and the new electrical theories, okay, so maybe those were two black holes colliding that LIGO saw with the gravitational waves, and maybe not. But the story here is that an echo of the event that shouldn't be there is being seen, and if confirmed, Einstein's relativity is in much more trouble than any of us believed. Excellent read. So folks, you may have been sort of interested in earthquake forecasting, but when we put California on watch and then gave it a red line when the scary parts of the ring of fire went orange, and we expanded the alert as energy was pouring in and then the earthquake struck, maybe now you want to know how we analyzed that one and how it's different from forecasting in other parts of the world, if at all. We're going to discuss that on today's episode of Fly on the Wall. Our podcast will post to suspiciousobservers.org in the members area in a few hours. We'll be talking about forecasting California earthquakes, bad news for GMO activists, and more. Right now, we've got your pressure and radar forecast, followed by shots of our star to close. It's 4.55 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.